blessed and a wonderful good morning to all of you this morning. I want to welcome you, my family here this morning, those are who are in the sanctuary with me, those who are joining us on Facebook, on Instagram, a blessed and a wonderful good morning to you. This morning, as we begin, the Word of God says in John chapter 16, verse 31 and 32. I'm getting part of going overhead. I don't have my glasses. Thank you. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own home, and shall leave, excuse me, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, perhaps, That in me you shall have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This morning I want to encourage you and to be of good peace. The word says, Jesus said, that the time cometh when we will be scattered. Are we not scattered now? Are we not in our homes? all by yourself, some of us. But Jesus said that he was not alone. And I want to tell you this morning that you are not alone. <laughs> Jesus said his father is with him. So he's come that we may have peace. So I want to encourage you this morning. He says in the word, we will have tribulation. But in the midst of that tribulation, be of good cheer. You have to see the good in where you are. There is a good in everything. But you have to open your eyes and look for it. So this morning, be at peace with yourself. Be of good cheer. Because no matter what comes your way, you are certain of one thing. That your Heavenly Father, He is there with you. So this morning, do not despair. If you're feeling a little despondent this morning, I want to encourage you to stand up. Shake it off and say, Satan, you are a liar. Because that's what he is. He is a liar. So shake it off this morning. Remember whose you are. Remember who is fighting for you. Remember who is standing on your side. And shake the devil off this morning. Tell him, devil, you are a liar. My father, my heavenly father, he told me to be of good cheer that he is with me. He said, my peace I give to you. And I'm accepting, I'm receiving his peace today. So I want to encourage you this morning. In the midst of all your circumstances. Yes, the circumstances that we go through can seem so tremendous, so mountainous. But take your eyes off of the, 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 the tribulations and the circumstances because there is nothing you can do about it. All you're doing is making yourself sick. Take your eyes off of it. And cast your eyes upward. The only place that there's hope. The only place that there's help. And that is in your Heavenly Father. So this morning, be in perfect peace. Please stand with me as we go before the throne of Almighty God this morning in prayer. Father God, this morning, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, this morning that we are standing in this day, Lord. Father, this is the day that you have made. 
and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, you said in your word that where the tools and trees are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. So this morning, Lord God, we come into your presence. We come, Lord God, humbly, Lord God, acknowledging that without you, we are nothing. So we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us this day. Father, we ask, Lord God, for your blessing as we will go through this day, Lord God. Father God, we know you've already gone through it for us. And there's nothing that will happen today that will take you by surprise. So we will trust you today in everything that we do. Father God, we ask your blessing even now upon the word. As it will come forth this morning, Lord God, I pray, God, that it will be food for your people, for your children, to help them to overcome, Lord God, any obstacles that will come their way. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for everyone here in your presence, those who will be ministering, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that everything that is done, that will bring glory, honor, and praise to your matchless name. And that, Lord God, someone out there in the world wide web will come to realize that God truly, that there is truly a God, and that they need you in their lives. So, Father God, we give you thanks, we give you praise for all that you're doing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. I want to officially welcome you once again to our service this morning. This morning in our service, we are honoring our over 70s. This is Senior Citizens Month, and we are going to be honoring our over 70s this morning. We want to give God thanks for such a legacy here at Chalky Mount. We have so many precious pearls in our midst. And when we look back at the legacy that these persons will be leaving behind for us, we give God thanks. We give God praise. We want to welcome also in our midst this morning, Reverend Ben and his lovely wife. And his way to be delivering the word of God this morning. So we thank you for being here with us. We pray God's blessing on you. At this time, I'm going to move myself up the way, and Sister Voice is going to come and read our morning lesson. And it is taken from Psalm 37, verse 1 to 20, 29. Blessed good morning to the church. Scripture lesson is taken from Psalm 37. Reading from verse 1 to 29. Here begin it. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious of against the workers of iniquity. For there shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth the righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of the man, press not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any way to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, there shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in abundance of peace. The wicked plotted against the just, and gathered upon him with his feet. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeketh that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bows. 
to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as to be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. There shall not be a shame in evil tongue, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemy of the Lord shall be as the fat of lamb. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borrows and pays not again, but the righteous shows mercy and giveth. For such as for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have, I have been young, and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. 29. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwelleth therein forever. The word of God says this morning, I have been young and I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'm sure if I had to ask anyone in this service this morning for a testimony, any of the older folk that are with us, I am sure you would hear, they would testify of that very verse, that they have been young and now they are old, and they have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. At this time, our worship team is going to come and lead us before the throne of God. And our worship team is led by Sister Maureen. A blessed good morning to everybody. Good morning. A special good morning to our precious pearls. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And as a country, we've been going through a lot lately. But let us be mindful this morning that whatever the situation is, we can lean on the arms of Jesus. Amen? Amen.
on our sight. Where would we be? Hallelujah. I'm going to invite at this time one of our precious pearls. I think she's like three years old. And I just want you to see the grace and mercy of our God. She's going to come, our sister, Deaconess, sorry, Deaconess Gwendolyn Bradshaw, and she's going to do a poem for us this morning. Amen. The title of my reading is Through the Golden Years. Through the Golden Years. We can't turn back the clock. That's how it used to be. Yesterday I knew before is but a memory. Two more years become the past. We have our future still, and we can know his guiding hand in doing our father's will. As we pause and consider the life that God has given us, we see how much we learn of him and grown in godly wisdom. So we may be an instrument for God to encourage truth, to impart in others' lives the knowledge they can use. So we shouldn't settle back into the golden years, for God has much more for us to do, and we have so much more to share. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Deaconess Bradshaw. And as her poem says, you can't look back and you can't go back. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't sit back because there is so much work out there for us to do. Thank you so very much. At this time, I'm going to invite first um, Pastor Ben to greet the church. And then immediately follow him, his wife will come, Sister Anita Ben. She is from the the, the this homeland, she's one of us. She grew up in this community, and God has kept her. His grace and mercy have brought her through. And this morning, she's here to share the word of Almighty God with us. So at this time, we're going to welcome first Robert Ben and then his wife, Sister Anita Ben. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to come to talk come to talk about when the Sunday school teacher asked if there's any perfect place, I said, stop it, what's it? Talk about it. <laughs> because it's always a joy to be here. It's such a beautiful, beautiful place. But they say you can take the boy out of the country, but you can never take the country out of the boy. Yeah. That's how I feel. God bless you. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And may we have a continuing good relationship with one another and with the Lord. Amen. Good morning to family yeah. and friends. I'm sure you have quite a big family in this place. Yeah, and I'm happy to be back at Chalky Mount. As I got out of the car and I looked around and looked at the sea and at Cambridge, and so my heart is so blessed. You live in a wonderful place. I don't think you have COVID down here. <laughs> fresh air and breezes and sea breezes and so on. But it is a privilege to be here with you this morning and I thank you for inviting me to share with you on this special occasion. Of course, you are honoring the 70 plus and I have passed that a good while now. <laughs> yeah, I was 74 last birthday, and um, apart from the pains and so on and the joints and so forth, I don't feel like 74. But God has been good, 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 good. He has been good to us. And today I want to give him thanks and praise for what he has done for me, where he has brought me from, where he has taken me to places that I never thought I would have gone you know, because of his goodness. And so today we want to thank God for his mercy, his grace, his love, 
you know, his provision, all of that, we thank him for. He's been good to us. Of course, my husband would say, Chuck, the monk is a good place, but that's where he found me. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoyed many wonderful times at Chuck Mount. This morning, the word of God comes to us from St. John chapter 15. St. John chapter 15. And we are going to look at the first 12 verses. Of course, this scripture is packed with information and encouragement. And we can't be with all, so we will just focus on a few things. St. John chapter 15. I am the true vine. This is Jesus speaking. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what he will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may, might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks this morning for your word to our hearts. You have something to say to us today. And dear God, we open our hearts and our minds and accept your word to our hearts. Do bless us. Do help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The topic I want to lift out of this passage is keeping connected to the vine. Keeping connected to the vine. The passage before us is a lesson to the disciples from Jesus using a familiar plant, the grapevine. It is said that the grapevine grew prolific prolifically in Palestine. And so Jesus, as usual, he would look around and take something from the environment and address it and teach lessons from it. It would be similar to using one of our familiar fruit trees like the breadfruit tree or the mango tree, coconut tree, whatever. He would teach a lesson from it so that we can learn spiritual ideas. We can glean spiritual food in an easy way. It's like teaching children. The lesson is with four specific areas. The vine, the husbandman, or the vine dresser in another passage, the branch, and the fruit. 
Jesus explains clearly that the vine is himself. He begins it, I am the vine. He's not embarrassed to say that, but he is glad to say that he is the vine. He is the vine, the husbandman is his father, our Lord, our heavenly father. The branches are the disciples who bear fruit. And of course, because of the disciples, we too will fall in the line of the branches. In today's society, we have a lot of persons whose hearts are failing them for fear. And Jesus spoke to that too. But if we as Christians, we will know the Lord, we do not have to let our hearts fail us for fear because we have one to whom we can be connected. We can be connected to the vine who is the source. He's a source of all we need, comfort, assurance, uh, his presence. Jesus is the vine. And as long as we have given our hearts to him, we become connected. We become connected. Jesus not only said he's a vine, but he's a true vine. Not any kind of vine. You know we have imitations. For example, if we are picking what we used to call rabbit meat, you know you have to avoid what we call bun mouth because they get entangled and mixed up together. But Jesus is a genuine vine, the true vine, suggesting that the other vines are false. They are wild, but he is the true vine. And today I want to encourage us to keep holding on to the true vine. Keep holding on to that vine, the vine that will not fail us, the vine that is our source, he is our source. And you know from planting, if a piece of your plant gets separated from the source, the fruit, the food source, you know that plant is going to die unless you have skills of attaching it back on. So we are going to keep, I'm saying this declaration to you, we are going to keep connected to the vine. And I encourage every Christian, young or old, 70-year-olds, 90-year-olds, or whatever, or even the young ones, to keep connected to the vine. If we are connected to the vine and we are obedient children, God is able to help us to avoid, avoid the difficulties of this time. Many persons are feeling depressed, lonely, they feel nobody cares, and there's so much disturbance around. But those of us whose eyes are fixed on God, those of us who are truly connected to Jesus, we have a source. We have more time to spend with Jesus now Amen. than we had before. All the rushing around and so on is out. You can spend time with the Lord. You can spend time reading the word of God praying, and so on. Don't waste it. Just use it for his honor and his glory. Jesus states that he is our source, as I said, source of life and production. Verse 5 indicates that nothing can be accomplished without him. Nothing can be accomplished without him. Therefore, the need for staying connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, is of primary importance. If we want to accomplish anything, we will keep connected to him. He maintains fruit bearing or fruitfulness. Separated from him, we will become barren and unfruitful. So we keep connected. It shows us that a connected life, working in unison with Jesus, avoids withering and death. 
verse 6 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. So we don't want to be cast forth, neither do we want to be, to get withery. A man and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. As I study this, I realize that the only person really who can cast us into the fire and burn is God. And we only do that when we fail to get connected to Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I encourage us, young and old, to become connected. If you're not yet connected to Jesus, now is the time. Today is the day to get connected to Jesus Christ. A connected life also encourages us, encourages us and ensures us answered prayer. Verse 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You might say, I've asked Jesus for something, but it hasn't been done yet. Well, keep believing. Keep connected. And I'm sure your prayers will be answered. The key word in this passage is abiding. Abiding, dwelling, living, remaining, staying. It occurs at least nine times in this passage. So you see the importance and the stress that Jesus placed on abiding or being connected. You know, not a loose relationship, but a real solid, solid relationship with him. And so we keep connected to the vine. Jesus Christ, the true vine the one that we must be connected to. And then we have the husbandman. What is his role? This morning we sang some of the songs, but the husbandman cares for us. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. He cares for us. The word says that our father is the husbandman. Every branch that bears not fruit, he take it away. He doesn't want that to the, the, the ones that are not bearing to sap the, the productivity from the rest of the tree. But those that are bearing fruit, he looks after them, praise the Lord. He purges them. He purifies them. He allows the, you know, to breathe. He allows the young shoots to shoot out and bear more fruit. And so he prunes and purges the branches which are fruit bearing. And the Bible tells us in 2B that they will bring forth more fruit. The tree is bearing pretty good, but you know that for yourself. When you trim it and take off the dying ones, it springs and grows more fruit. And this is what God does with us. We don't like the pruning. We don't like the, the taking off the dry branches and so on of our life spiritually. But when that is done, when we shed the things that are making us not productive, then we produce more fruit, more fruit. And so, dear hearts, I encourage you to submit to the pruning process. We must submit to the pruning process. We will be remain connected when we submit to the pruning process, and then we bear more fruit. Matthew 21 and from verse 18 to 20 would tell us of a story that Jesus himself said. That he saw this fig tree with beautiful leaves which suggested that it should have fruit. But there was none. In fact, the Bible says there was nothing but leaves. And when Jesus, they were hungry, the Bible says, when they went, Jesus leading to get fruit from this fig tree, nothing but leaves. And so Jesus cursed that fig tree. The Bible tells us that when the disciples passed back, maybe the next day or in the late afternoon, they saw the fig tree dried up. And they remarked at it. You know, how is it that this fig tree has dried up so quickly. 
And so, dear hearts, let us not be like this fig tree. We are productive people in this particular, even in this society. As Christians, we are blessings in this society. And so, we will not have it said of us that we are just show. Just show. We have substance. When the leaves are there, we have substance. When you have to produce, you will produce. As a Christian, even in your workplace, you will produce. You will not be just having leaves, all show, and no productivity. We will walk the talk, and we will do what we say. So this morning, dear hearts, we are keeping connected to the vine. We are keeping connected to the vine. The Bible also tells us that when we keep connected to the vine and we bear more fruit and much fruit, our Heavenly Father is glorified. Jesus always said, I seek to glorify my Father, and therefore we too seek to glorify our Father. We seek to live for Him. And that verse is found in this word where it says that the Father will be glorified when we bear much fruit. Verse 8, herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. The branches are the disciples. Disciples, similar. We remember Jesus told the disciples that he's not only praying for them, but he's praying for all of us who will hear what the disciples say. And so we are his disciples as well. Disciples have died and gone on, but the message and the business is, is, is uh, passed on to us. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And therefore, we as branches, we will bring forth much fruit. Those of us who receive Christ the vine, we are attached to the vine. It's a two-way process. Jesus said in 5b that it would be, I in him, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So it's a two-way process. We are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. A two-way process. Jesus doesn't abide and we do nothing. It is a relationship based on love. As the Father hath loved me, verse 9, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So it's not only a relationship based on obedience and so on, but it's a, a relationship based on love. We serve God because we love him. We enjoy serving him. Obedience, and we keep his commandments. If you keep my commandments, verse 10, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments, and abide in his love. So we, as Christians, older, younger, middle-aged, male, female, we abide in his love. How do we stay connected? You may ask. Because you can be connected today and be disconnected tomorrow, like the electricity or the water or whatever. But we stay, we seek to stay connected. You can have a, a stove or whatever piece of equipment. And if you don't plug it into the source, you know, it will not give you what you want. It will serve you. But we stay connected. We have established that life comes from the divine Jesus Christ. Therefore, there is a necessity for maintaining a strong connection. You know, on the, 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 high, the Wi-Fi, sometimes you see the connection is weak. We want a strong, strong connection. Strong connection, you get good reception. And therefore, we maintain a strong connection, like our plants and so on, watering and so forth. 
His words must remain in us. Verse 3 and verse 7. That's one way. His words remaining in us. His words found in the Bible, the word of God. His words are there. We read and trust his words. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119 is full, replete with testimonies and precepts and all of those statutes, all of the laws. We follow that. And the word of God says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed there to the word of God and so on. Thy word is a lamp and a light. The word of God is important for the Christian. And uh, I want to give you a few verses, but I'm not reading them. Psalm 119, 9 to 11, 15 to 16, 33 to 36, and there are many more. As you read that passage, I usually highlight where you see law, statute, judgments, you know, testimonies. So we maintain an up-to-date relationship with God. You know what I say? Up-to-date. I cannot look back at 1972 and talk about it. It must be up to date. We're up to date relationship with the living word, Jesus Christ, and through prayer and love. 9, verse 9 and verse 10 tells us about that. Through prayer and through love. We keep his commandments as summarized in Matthew 22. 37 to 40, where Jesus told his disciples and tells us that we are to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and strength and so on, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. A summary of the commandment, the greatest commandment Jesus gave. And so we follow his advice. We rely on him. We depend on him. We do nothing without him. Our job, whatever we have, we do it on him. We rely on him. We depend on him. Apart from me, you can do nothing else. In Acts 17 and 28, Paul told the people on Mars Hill, For in him we live and we move and we have our being. Everything about us is wrapped up in Jesus. One song we used to say we are wrapped up, tangled up in Jesus. And that's a good relationship to have, where we are wrapped up in Jesus. Finally, my dear hearts, after the resurrection, two of the disciples on their way to Emmaus implored Jesus to abide with them since it was even time. And I question myself, I question myself, is it important that we ask Jesus to abide with us? Because he wants to abide with us. It's, us. it's we who need to abide with him in Luke 24 and 29. This could be our attitude, should be our attitude to seek to remain in contact with Jesus. He wants to abide and remain with us. Do we desire to remain connected to him? Does our attitude, demeanor, behavior encourage him to stay with us? Are we bearing fruit and submitting to the pruning process so that even in old age, we can still be bearing fruit? Our assignment might be different. Things that I used to do before I can't do now, they might change. But even in prayer, we can bear fruit. One writer says, a Christian is strongest when he is on his knees. So even if you don't preach a sermon, sing a solo, or anything else, you can pray and lift each other up in prayer. Lift this nation up in prayer. Lift your brethren up in prayer. That can be our assignment as 70 year olds and plus. Lift our government in prayer, you know. Lift this world, Indonesia and all those places, Afghanistan, America. Lift them up in prayer because God answers prayer. 
I saw their hearts. I encourage you to keep connected to Jesus. Holy ones among us, let us keep connected. Don't be distracted. Young ones, keep connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. May God bless you today and for the rest of your lives. And may we live as long as God intends for us to live by following the protocols and doing the necessary things that preserve our lives, preserving our lives, being connected to Jesus Christ. May God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen. Thank you so very much, Sister Ben. And what a wonderful word this morning and another great testimony. If you ask the older folk, what has kept you this long that, you know, to reach 93 and 94, I'm sure they will tell you it is the relationship Amen. that they had with Jesus. It was because they were connected to the vine and they kept that relationship going and God has honored them in his, in that relationship. We are now going to invite our sister Jacqueline Chase and she's going to come and do a present. She's going to come and do a special song for us this morning. A blessed good morning to the church. Romans 6 verse 13 says, Do not offer parts of your body to sin, to be used as weapons to do wrong. Instead, Present yourselves to God as people who have been brought back to life from the dead and offer all the parts of your body to God to be used as instrument to do right. So this morning I want to encourage all of us to make ourselves available to God this morning for him to use us for his glory, to use our hands to reach out, to use our eyes to discern many people that are in need, to need, use our voices to praise him and to tell others about him.
the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for coming out.